Weather forecasting is now a multi-billion pound global industry. With British companies investing heavily in meteorological information to make their businesses weatherproof. We didn't get the weather forecast uh, predicted right very, very quickly. Um, you could have empty shelves and very disappointed customers. And one of the world leaders is the UK's very own Met Office. Weather forecasts really are essential to the running of the UK. Now, for the first time in their 160-year history, they're opening their doors to reveal that there's so much more to the Met Office than giving us our daily forecast. There is nothing that the weather really doesn't touch in everything that we do, because the weather is awesome. This time, when a big chill grips, snow threatens the supermarket shelves. If it's bad weather, when people start panic buying, the first thing they want to do is go and get a pint of milk. The transport industry prepared to fight back against winter. It's all about maintaining safe operations. Whilst the Met Office set out to keep us all safe. At the end of the day, weather forecasts help save lives. It's mid-January 2015. So far, the winter has brought wind and waves. But now, Britain looks to be heading for a deep freeze. At the Met Office HQ in Exeter, some of the best meteorological minds down tools for the chief forecaster's daily briefing. Morning, everyone. It's been a pretty busy morning, uh, just trying to get to grips with uh, exactly what's going on. A low-pressure system is developing over the Atlantic, pulling in a mass of cold polar air across Britain. The main um, sort of disruption, the trough here, which is going to extend sort of southeastward, bringing the threat of snow to parts of Wales and the Midlands and northern England. Potentially 10, perhaps uh, as much as 15 centimetres for that area we're considering a yellow warning uh, this morning. It's at times like these that their forecast really can make the difference between life and death. I think we've got a plan with it. It's just a case of getting, you know, fine-tuning the warning areas. The question is going to be whether we have a separate yellow warning for the snow. It's estimated that one day of severe cold weather could cost the UK economy as much as 500 million pounds. So, it's vital that meteorologists issue a series of alerts so the nation can be prepared. The phrase forewarned is forearmed really works with the Met Office and the services that we provide. Every forecast starts with incredibly complicated and accurate measurements of weather that's already happened. And it's all fed into this, their £33 million supercomputer. There's so much data flowing into the Met Office each day, millions of observations from satellite, from radar, from weather stations that you might see, the kind of thing you have in your back garden, to ocean buoys, to aircraft, to anything you can think of really that can measure what's happening in the atmosphere comes here each day. The computers that we've got here can do something like 1.2, 1.3 trillion calculations per second, and it gives you an idea as to what kind of number crunching has to go on in order to create a forecast process. But computers can only do so much. It takes the human touch of the Met Office's meteorologists to interpret how the weather will affect the country. In the old days, we perhaps sort of sent out a weather forecast and then washed our hands of it and moved on. Now, it's very much more about understanding what the weather means to people in the real world. As news of the big freeze hits the headlines, it's the job of the weather desk to deal with the public's concerns. We will have uh, temperatures for London tomorrow. All right. No worries, sir. Take care. Like 250 tweets overnight asking where's the snow, if they haven't got it yet, or oh, we've got loads of snow here now. So uh, lots of questions and comments from them. And as the snow begins to settle across parts of the north, the social media desk is inundated with tweets of joy and jubilation. Snow is really popular in the UK. And downright disappointment. We had this morning someone asking uh, why it didn't snow in the area and the fact that their kids were quite upset, but more importantly, their beagle was particularly upset with the fact that he was inconsolable this morning. Oh, yes. there's the beagle. For the general public, free forecasts, warnings and access to the weather desk are all part of the Met Office's crucial public weather service for the UK. 
companies pay a small fortune to a range of weather forecasters for bespoke meteorological intelligence because minimising the impact of a big freeze can be very profitable. The aviation industry is worth billions of pounds each year and the bespoke services that we provide to them is estimated to save around £2.7 billion pounds every year. The Met Office's Aviation Desk is one of just two centres to provide weather data for the whole of the global aviation industry. Four times a day, 365 days a year, forecasts are produced here for the world's pilots. Massive amounts of thunderstorms over the Eastern Med, there's Cyprus right underneath this lot here, so not really ideal winter sun conditions, and then really right through the Med, huge amounts of thunderstorms again there, so it's very unsettled down there. EasyJet have flights operating out of more than 130 airports, from Morocco to Moscow to Malaga, and they rely on specialist Met Office forecasts to know what the weather is doing not just at home, but around the globe. So they are prepared to pay for an extra layer of weather intelligence. The accurate weather data is very important for us. We're looking at uh, thunderstorms, uh, high winds, uh, this time of year obviously snow, and we want to be on the front foot in regard to actually dealing with it. It's 5am on a cold winter's morning, and Met Office meteorologist Will Chappell is clocking on, not in Exeter, but at the airline's HQ in Luton. Will is one of three meteorologists that the airline pays to be embedded with their operations staff during the volatile winter months. We can use our expert um, meteorological knowledge to interpret <coughs> weather data um, from right across the network. With flights departing and arriving from across the network, weather events anywhere in Europe or North Africa could have a knock-on effect on the airline schedule. But the challenges today are much nearer to home. Hello, Will. It's uh, Dave here down in Exeter. Just issue the strong wind warning for Luton. The more expertise and the knowledge we have here in OCC is the better, so it just gives us higher quality decision making. We're looking sort of um, uh, 18 gusting, sort of 30, something along those lines. At low levels, when you get very strong winds, it can create quite severe turbulence, and today um, we're looking at um, severe low level turbulence at a number of airports around the UK. Turbulence basically means an unstable movement of air and it most often happens inside clouds. And with airlines keen to avoid it for the sake of their passengers, they're prepared to invest in specialist turbulence forecast. The bigger the clouds, the more energy it has, the more turbulence you get. But you can get turbulence outside of cloud as well. And we have a specialist team of forecasters who are looking at clear air turbulence as well as the turbulence within cloud. The wind is producing difficult conditions in the air, but the plummeting temperatures have ensured there's plenty of work to be done anti-icing the runways and taxiways before planes can even think about taking to the skies. Surface temperatures about minus one. We're due to drop to about minus two to minus three. We're going to have aircraft land on this runway that we're doing over 150 knots. They've got to be able to stop. But aircraft can freeze at temperatures above zero because frost can form on their cold metal surfaces at a more moderate three degrees. There's a lot of moving parts on the wings and on the tail. This is what gets your plane off the ground. This is what steers it. And uh, if they freeze up, the captain hasn't got control of that. It's all about maintaining safe operations. With the fleet ready to get airborne, the attention turns from the local weather conditions to the globe. At 8 a.m. each day, the airline holds its morning conference, with operations managers ringing in from across the airline's network. Good morning, Milan, and Charles de Gaulle. Good morning, you. Uh, Charles de Gaulle team is here, Sophie and Vincent. Good morning, Charles de Gaulle. And right at the heart of that meeting is Will, the Met Office's on-site meteorologist. The main focus of our attention today is the strong winds developing over the north of the UK. We go through a daily grind every day where we have uh, uh, ops meetings um, at certain times of the day looking at certain issues uh, and they are part of that and a very important part because obviously the weather will drive a lot of our decisions. We've also got a lot of thunderstorm activity in the Mediterranean um, so 
This is mainly focused around the eastern Mediterranean and Cyprus today. So with the aviation desk flagging challenging weather conditions across the network, the embedded team will be earning their keep. During his 10-hour shift, Will is responsible for monitoring the weather conditions for over 500 flights. So we can see the lightning strike, so there's perhaps an increasing risk of seeing a thunderstorm at, at Tel Aviv in the next sort of hour or so. Um, so with those uh, three flights inbound, we send out a, an ACARS message. Will is sending the very latest weather update directly to the cockpit, where it will help the pilot to make some critical decisions. Avoiding thunderstorms makes for a more pleasant journey, but making an unnecessary diversion can be a very costly mistake. So it pays to have the very latest forecast. If the lightning or thunderstorms are particularly severe or widespread, then um, they could potentially be put on a different course. With the update sent, flight EZY4783 from Berlin to Tel Aviv enjoyed an uneventful flight, landing safely just a few minutes late as it avoided the storms in the Med, just as Will is handing over to his colleague on the late shift. Focus over the next few days is all about the UK, so we're going to keep this area of low pressure nearby, keeping our strong winds through uh, Wednesday and Thursday. That's one to keep an eye on for sure. Back in the Met office, the chilly British January is getting colder, and the meteorologists are now concerned by the freezing polar air, strengthening its grip on the country. Um, wet bulb freezing levels drop quite quickly in this air mass. Uh, risk of hail, thunder, sleet and snow. So we're going to start seeing the snow accumulation start to mount up again. So the Public Weather Service have now issued an important weather bulletin on the Met Office's website. Well, winter's here and it looks like it's here with a bit of a cold snap. With the cold intensifying its grip across the whole country, will forewarned mean forearmed for us, the British public? At the end of the day, weather forecasts help save lives, and if we didn't have them, I think it would be a much more challenging place to be. Over the next few days and nights, the meteorologists will be working round the clock to stop a frozen Britain grinding to a halt, or even worse. The Met Office has accurately predicted a deep and lasting freeze across much of Britain. This has been um, probably the more prolonged period of cold weather we've seen so far this, this, this uh, season, and that's why um, we've issued a cold weather alert um, across England. And to the relief of the press office, the warnings are hitting the headlines. They actually tell the story about our warnings as well, and that's the really important thing. Obviously, everyone's really interested in the snow, but equally, there can be potential hazards mixed in. Cold can kill. So the Met Office have dedicated experts who advise the Department of Health on when alerts should be issued. There are different actions that health professionals, res emergency response teams and the public um, can take in response to those alert levels. And the most vulnerable groups are obviously the elderly and the very young. The prospect of a prolonged freeze has resulted in a severe health warning. It's an essential alert for organisations like Age UK. 74, knocking on door. To give you an idea, the Office of National Statistics um, has calculated that for every one degree centigrade below the national winter average that the temperature falls, that leads to 5,000 uh, extra deaths. In the freezing cold of the Yorkshire Dales, snow has settled on the high ground and is threatening to creep to lower levels. So the public health alert has the charities volunteers making preemptive checks on their most at-risk clients. A lot of these people are frail and vulnerable, so it's uh, important that uh, you know we'll keep a check on them. A lot of the elderly don't notice the sudden changes in temperature. Yeah, it is responsible for a massive amount of uh, uh, loss of life. The effects of the cold can be so severe that charities have to make extra home visits during a low temperature warning. Warm enough? Yes, thank you. Good. Right, just want to fill these radiators, Joe. Yeah, it's nice and warm. All right, enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. Okay, do you want me to put this away for you? Yes, please. All right, I'll see you soon. Thank you. With the central heating taking the strain, the cold weather alerts seem to be working for at least one person. 
cold snap has now also sunk its teeth into the usually mild southeast. And the social media desk is buzzing with people enjoying the dusting of snow. You always know when it snows in London because a lot of people tend to uh, stop talking about it. People have been sharing their images, so someone in Cambridge posted a picture of the giant snowman they made with a scarf. Someone shared a picture of their cat walking across the snow and some people also shared pictures of their children experiencing the first snow they'd ever seen. But much to the bemusement of the media team, a new term has gripped the imagination of the press. Thunder snow. Thunder snow is just a thunderstorm which instead of having rain has snow. So you get them in the winter. Um, and I don't know why that's attracted so much attention this winter, because we have them most winters, it's winter weather. But for some reason this year it has captured the imagination and I've no idea why. While some of us enjoy the snow, thunder or otherwise, it can prove a real challenge for supermarkets trying to keep their shelves stocked. So forecasting for Britain's leading stores is a lucrative business. With just under 3,000 shops spread across the whole of the UK, the co-op knows the perils of bad weather better than most, and they pay one of the Met Office's main rivals for their bespoke forecasts. Our customers react really quickly to the weather, and so we have to look ahead and, and, and try and almost second-guess what they want to do. Many of their stores are in rural communities, easily cut off by adverse weather. And when the cold weather bites, locals turn to them for their staple foods. One of the main things is eggs and bacon. You know, and sausages, they're the main things that we, we, we stock all the time. They always expect it always to be there. The biggest nightmare um, that we can see weather-wise is, is when we don't see things happening. But with stores in virtually every postcode in Britain, the weather can play havoc when planning deliveries. In the winter, um, it's more about physical logistics, so actually getting the product to the store. So every Monday morning, the week kicks off with a dedicated meeting at their Manchester HQ to discuss the weather. And this week, top of the agenda, is the powerful low-pressure system tightening its hold across swathes of the UK. So today, I just want to talk about what the impact is around the current storms. Currently six stores at the moment still waiting for their Saturday deliveries. So we're going to take a call at lunchtime today whether we need to unlock them for a further period so they can amend their orders and generate the recovery. Some of our stores are in really quite inhospitable um, situations from the Isles of Scilly to the Shetland Islands in the north of Scotland and can, can be the only supermarket in the area so it's really important um, for us as a business to support those stores in supporting the customers. With snow forecast, one store that's prone to being cut off by the elements is in the small town of Grasmere, right in the heart of the Lake District. We're just waiting for our delivery at the moment. We have got snow forecast today, and uh, hopefully it's not going to uh, stop our fresh fruit best coming in for other customers. With supplies in Grasmere running dangerously low, it's at times like this that the weather intelligence really has to deliver. But our food suppliers aren't the only companies who need to conquer the big chill. Accurate forecasts from all the weather providers have a huge benefit for the whole transport industry. Weather forecasts really are essential to the running of the UK. If you think about someone like Network Rail, if they can't run their timetables as you would normally do if there's a big storm coming, that means people can't get to work. also have a devastating effect on Network Rail's 20,000 miles of track. So they regularly take to the skies to make sure the cold disrupts as few as possible of the one and a half billion rail journeys we take every year. Okay, so happy with the speed? Yeah, the speed's fine. Many of the most vital train points are electrically heated during cold weather. And using an onboard thermal imaging camera, the engineers are looking for any evidence of broken heaters or other electrical faults. Either could cause services to grind to a halt in icy conditions. Yeah, we're looking for anything that's, that's hot on the track and it'll show up as a white dot. Just below us now on the screen, we've got some of the point heaters on. 
It only takes temperatures to drop below three degrees, and any unheated points could possibly freeze, closing a section of track on the approach to London Bridge, one of the busiest of over two and a half thousand stations owned by Network Rail. So there you can see on the screen now the nice white strips, which they should be um, on the screen, looking like they're all working there. Right, that's that one done. I've got a fault here. Okay, good. Right, what we found here is um, a high voltage lug which uh, powers the third rail. Now it's showing hot on the screen. It could cause dead section on this part of the line, but just finding that one is 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 really good, just to help increase performance. With the location of the fault passed to engineers on the ground, the capital's busiest commuter lines can now be braced for the winter weather. But for every weather-related setback, many more journeys by road, rail and air pass off without incident. Even in the most extreme of weather, thanks to forward planning. A truck full of extra supplies is now heading towards Grasmere, deep in the Lake District. As the co-op react to predicted snowfall, it's this sort of weather that will see the locals stock up on the staples. So if the truck doesn't get through, Empty shelves in the only supermarket in town could cause an embarrassment. The items probably people that customers are expecting all the time is bread and milk because if, if it's bad weather, when people start panic by, the first thing they want to do is go and get a pint of milk. The company's investment in tailored weather data has helped to predict a run on the most basic of foods. And with the food barely on the shelves, the forecast snow hits this corner of Britain. It's um, half past three now, quarter to four. Um, obviously, the prediction with the bad weather, it's uh, now started with snowing really heavy. Uh, and obviously, we've got a lot of customers coming in now buying their supplies because obviously, we don't know how bad this weather's going to continue. Much of the weather business is invisible. It's about finding solutions before the weather causes a problem. The weather affects the businesses that impact our lives. So is there going to be electricity there when you turn the lights on in the morning? Is the road going to be safe to drive on? Weather forecasts really are essential to the running of the UK. As one weather front passes us by, there will always be another on the horizon. So at the Met Office, it's business as usual. Next time, as one of the hottest autumns on record hits Britain, Met Office forecast proved critical for the Red Arrows. Yeah, I'm constantly assessing the weather to try and get the best display that I can. The warm weather plays havoc with the supermarket shelves. A lot of these crops have grown on larger than what we'd expect them to do. And the meteorologists go sky high in search of snow. Three, two, one, release.